And some of the lessons to, to learn from this background about Paul's story, Paul's conversion, is that we should not expect everyone to immediately and rightly understand the biblical truth that we stand for. We should not assume the enemies of the gospel will describe Christians in the faithfulness that we want them to see. That everyone will think this is wise and timely. And we should not despair if clear proclamation of truth actually, watch this, actually increases people's opposition to Christ and his word. We should not despair if clear proclamation of the truth actually increases people's opposition to Christ and his word. That's what happened. That's what happened with Stephen's sermon, his clear, bold exposition of Israel's history and God's redemptive plans. Because look what Saul did in chapter 8. Keep reading chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Some devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house and dragging off men and women. He would put them into prison. If all of this would have happened, would happen in our times? Can I venture a guess what might happen? Professedly Christian blogs would, would point to this as the bad fruit of, of Stephen's sermon. Critics would say, you know, Stephen's approach was too direct. He, he was, he was, his tone, it was too harsh. He made it harder for people to listen to the gospel. And so Stephen didn't handle this right because people just got angry and and made things worse. Stephen, you need to tone it down, bud. That's how the blog would go, isn't it? That's how the podcast would sound. I don't say that to be snarky. Listen, I say it because the masses of elite evangelicalism are steeped in pragmatism. That's where that comes from. It comes from pragmatism. Pragmatism asks the question, did what we do work? Did it work? Did it produce the outcomes that we desired, that we designed, that we wanted? That's pragmatism. That's different than asking the question, did we obey Scripture? Did we obey Scripture? Were we faithful to God's Word? One is about obeying what's revealed. One is about outcomes. And those outcomes may get framed in sort of biblical ways, but they're about outcome, not about faithfulness. As if we control the outcome, as if the Holy Spirit is not in charge of the outcome. 